today's Mercedes-Benz interview of the day, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes-Benz has an SUV for you, whether it's the stylish GLC, the compact GLA, the three-row GLS, or the GLE or GLC plug-in hybrids. Visit MBUSA.com for special offers. It's a relationship that goes back, I think, 13 years. He's Kirk Cousins, the Falcons quarterback, four-time Pro Bowler, fresh off the win Monday night against the Eagles back on the program. How you doing? I'm doing well, Dan. I'm also a big fan of a Mercedes-Benz. Now that I moved to Atlanta, I drive a Mercedes-Benz. But I'm here on this interview for one reason and one reason only, and that's to talk about another brand that I have a great uh, respect uh, for and want to honor, and that's Qualcomm, oh. a uh, semiconductor <laughs> software and telecommunications company that uh, really just inspired me to get on this interview today. Thank you. I hope you'll uh, allow me to indulge in you in some other questions about like the win against the Eagles. But if you want to get around talking about Qualcomm, we'll get to that pitch coming up. Unlike Matt Harvey, I will allow you to talk football. Okay. But Qualcomm does mean a great deal to me as it does Matt. <laughs> All right. Last drive by Philly. You're on the sidelines. What do you think is going to happen? How, how's that going to play out? You know what, Dan, the final drive of the game, uh, I've got some scars in my football career uh, where I thought we had won the game and then it didn't end up uh, the way I had hoped. So I get a little skeptical uh, when I'm standing there watching, but uh, you also believe, you know, we can do this. And um, uh, all the Eagles needed was a field goal. So I was just standing and watching and, um, and our defense made a great play. Jesse Bates was instinctual, got the interception. And at that point, just needed to take a knee. But when you see them passing, because I on the Manning cast, you had Peyton Eli and Matt Ryan saying, the only way the Falcons can get the ball back is if the Eagles put the ball in the air. You see the pass, and then what are you thinking when Saquon drops that? You know, I think that's what's kind of so fun about pro football is the strategy and the different options you have there. I had heard an argument for you do the the you know the sneak that they've made famous on third down and see if you can get it to a fourth and one and then because that play is seemingly so unstoppable just do it again on fourth down and believe that you're going to get it again so there's an argument for just doing that sneak all the way down the field um but the play was a good play in the sense that he 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 is open in the flat and it's a safe throw and uh your odds are he's going to catch it and potentially convert and and you can ice the game so you know, when you don't know the future, you don't know how it's going to play out. All you can do is is make your best call that you believe in and um, and let it go from there. What was it like? You get in the huddle for that last drive and you say what? You know, I get very methodical. I'm kind of just process driven. So the play comes in. Hey, we got to run this play. Uh, if anything, it's all game. It's, hey, guys, let's just have fun competing and, and let wait, the outcome. Wait, wait, wait. That's what you say? You're just like, hey, let's let's compete. Have some fun. I think there's a little bit of that. Just let's not overcomplicate this. We don't need to talk about, uh, you know, the magnitude of the moment. We don't need to talk about how John Candy's in the stands. You know, they talk about how Joe Montana said that. Like, <laughs> that's all well and good, but let's just go play and uh, find the open guy, um, get rid of the ball, and try to get that first first down. And I think I play my best just kind of simplifying the process and just treat it like you're, you're playing the job, the position you've always played. I'm going to give your offensive line credit, but also in the process question, the Eagles didn't blitz you. How surprised yeah. were you? And I know their defensive coordinator normally doesn't do that, but you don't have great mobility coming off surgery. How surprised were you that they didn't send an extra guy or two? Well, so the touchdown at Darnell Mooney was cover zero. So that was an all out blitz. So if anything, okay. you know, when they did when they did bring the blitz, you know, we had a, our biggest play of the night in terms of an explosive play. So he may have said, hey, I, I learned my lesson sending the pressure there. Let's not do that. And secondly, until the final drive, when they were playing more of a prevent coverage to just keep us out of the end zone, they really did have a roof on the defense and we were, weren't getting many explosives throughout the game. So I would say their plan was reasonably effective um, outside of that cover zero and then outside of the final drive. So I wouldn't really second guess that plan. And Vic Fangio is a D coordinator. I have a lot of respect for played against a lot. He's always kind of been tough. It's been hard to find explosives. And in the first game against the Packers, they didn't blitz a ton either. So it was pretty, pretty consistent with what they've been doing. Let's go around the room and guess the percentage that Kirk's Achilles is or what he's going to say. So, Todd, what do you think Kirk is going to say as far as how far along he is with the recovery? I'm going to say 83% 83. is the number that came to mind. Seton? I'll 
go 90, 95. 90. Well, yeah. I need you to pick. Mm, I'm going to go towards 90. 90. Marvin? 95. Paulie? Kirk's a very positive guy. I'm going to say 105%. He's actually 105. better. Oh, he's better now. Let's go. He's, he's faster. Faster. I, okay. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to say he's 88% right now. I'm somewhere between like 95 and 105. So if I put you there, I'd create a good parameter. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good. I think the challenge for me, Dan, honestly, would be the red jersey of practice and the rust that I think needed to be worked off. I think that being out since week eight last year or after week eight, and when you come back, you're not really back. You're in a red jersey. And it just doesn't have the same feel of live football. Um, I've always said that going into week one, that it's a little hard. But um, just felt that again this year. And, and um, you know, I'm optimistic that as we go here, that, that that rust gets off pretty quick. But how does that affect you as far as planting or running or lateral movement? You know, I think I think in the first game against the Steelers, the the final play really basically the interception that I threw – I'm getting, you know, I'm there, there, there's push, but I'm used to in practice, basically the seas part, you know, it's like Moses in the Red <laughs> Sea where I just stand there and everybody just gets out of the way and I make the throw. And then you play against the Steelers and you realize they're not getting out of the way. They're just going to continue to make it a telephone booth for you. And so kind of realizing that I've been playing in a much, much bigger telephone booth in practice, you get this false sense of security of, oh, I, I got space here. I got room when in reality, no, you don't. And so it takes live bullets to realize, you know, just how fast the game is moving and how just how small that telephone booth can get. He's uh, Mr. Primetime now, Kirk D. Cousins, joining <laughs> us on the program for the last five Monday night. You couldn't. You know, Dan, I guess the tables have turned along those lines. <laughs> what it happened? Be, uh, what ha I couldn't figure it out in primetime. And I always shrug my shoulders at both sides because some of these primetime wins I've had recently, I really haven't played that that great. You know, I remember we had won a couple Monday night games at the Bears and I walked out the field. We won, but. I wasn't outstanding, and there have been games in the past we lost, and I thought, that's the best I've ever played. So I kind of shrug my shoulders at it, but I'll much rather take uh, Mr. Primetime than uh, what it used to be. But what is that like when you throw that interception? That, that you know, you feel like, okay, we've lost this game or I've cost us. That feeling of walking off, you know, to the sidelines going into the locker room. You know, it definitely ruined my my afternoon and my evening, Dan. Um it's pretty miserable. Um, but when you go home to the kid's wife. Nah, nah. It's there's no there's no consolation. I was sitting there watching the Lions and Rams and I'm uh pretty miserable uh, on Sunday night. Um that that's the, honestly Dan, that's the challenge I've had my whole career is how do you how do you still sort of sleep at night? How do you, you know, because you're gonna fail, this league's gonna test you, is being able to kind of let it roll off your back and just move forward. For me, it's always been you just wear it so hard. And uh, that was something that both Sean McVay and I used to kind of, you know, have a kindred spirit about is it just it just eats at you. And it's what it's what makes you great. It's one of your greatest strengths, but then it can also be one of your biggest challenges you face. And um, and just that that how much it means to you is something I've always tried to kind of balance. <laughs> but the pressure that I see on these rookie quarterbacks, you played, I think, one game your rookie season, but you know, high draft pick, come on in, and let's see some magic here. Uh, Bryce Young from last year, now he gets benched. I can you can you put us in that position of what that pressure is like for these kids? Yeah, it's it's um, it's difficult. Um, first of all, football's a team game, and so when you have a great system, great coaches around you, getting people wide open, the protection plan's outstanding. You're going to look a little better, and vice versa. When you you know, if you got a you know, people around you who aren't really helping move the needle, that can make it a lot harder too. So um, the quarterback gets evaluated so much as if he's on an island when in reality it's a team deal. And then uh, certainly as a rookie, there's going to be, you know, a learning curve. There's going to be things that you've got to figure out. And then then year two comes where defenses say, okay, we, we've got a year of film on you now. We're going to study you and start to figure out better how to defend you. So even once you have a good rookie year, that doesn't suddenly mean you've got it all figured out. So it's a marathon, not a sprint. I learned that firsthand being a fourth round pick, thinking that going to Washington was a dead end and seeing how my career played out. You, you got to play for the long game and just believe that if you have good habits and a good process, that the long game will work itself out. You got the Chiefs coming to town? Yep, Sunday night. How how often do you you watch the other quarterback? To not Not as a fan, but just watching during the game of what Mahomes would do or Brady would do or Josh, whoever it might be. 
Well, it's funny because I remember driving home from a game last year. Uh, we play at noon in Minnesota Central Time, so we'd be driving home at like four o'clock. And my wife, who who loves following it all, said in the car, she said, "Oh, Sunday night football this week is uh, Mahomes versus versus Stafford. That's going to be great. It's going to be a lot of fun, or, or whatever the two quarterbacks were." And I remember kind of kind of laughed. I'm like, "Well, it's the Chiefs versus the Rams. It's not Mahomes <laughs> versus Stafford." But but her point is is that the quarterbacks are what makes it fun to watch. And and I would tend to agree with her that. When you have two really high-level, experienced quarterbacks with a lot of skins on the wall, that's what kind of draws my interest the most to watch and to study and to see. And so um, I think that's where football gets really fun is when you get those quarterbacks who you feel really know what they're doing. Um, it, it's it's really the best product. Okay. Full disclosure, I wasn't big on the uniforms, the away uniforms. The all white with the black helmet. Yeah, I needed I need a little more oomph in there, a little bit more contrast in there. And I don't really? know if you can work this in your contract. Um, well, you already I, you know, I've, I've negotiated a lot of contracts over the years, so I'm I'm open to anything. <laughs> You're man. very good at it. You're very good at it. I think we gotta we gotta do a little better on the road. Uh, it just felt a little. Your uniforms felt incomplete. See, well, I, I don't want I don't want incomplete uniforms. But uh, when I played at Michigan State, our style was all white, head to toe, with the uh, with the green helmet. And so when I came in the locker room the other night and saw it's going to be all white with the black helmet, it kind of took me back to my Michigan uh, State days. And I thought okay. I can I can work with this. We had success with this in college, so uh, I was open to it. You know, the linemen tend to like all black because black is slimming. <laughs> they do not like all white. They feel like they're walking out there looking like the Michelin man. So linemen would be wow. more in your corner. The all white does not work for them. When Drake London goes to the line of scrimmage, does he have any options there of, I mean, the move is incredible to score the game winner, but right. like, how does that work? What's the play call? And, and it's going to him, but does he have any, uh, can he change anything? You know, so it's it's designed for him to kind of have that basketball crossover. Drake has a basketball background, and so he he has a real natural feel for how to break down and kind of sell one way and go the other, um, like he's a point guard. And that's really what the route called for. And Darius Slay is such an instinctive corner and plays with great vision. And so we knew that this route could kind of kind of play to to Darius's game, where if Drake gives that move inside, he'll he'll react and he'll go for that big play. And then we can break back out to the front pylon. Really, the freedom that Drake has is which angle to set. Do what, Does he flatten it to the front pylon? Does he kind of set it higher? So based on the coverage contour, he'll change that angle. But once I saw him kind of get Darius to bite inside, I, I just knew I had to put it out to the sideline and he'll go get it. And uh, very rarely do you get that much separation down in the low red zone. So Drake made my job a, a lot easier. How aware will you be where Chris Jones is? Yeah, you have to be. Uh, he'll he'll wreck the game if you're not. But do you go to the line um, of scrimmage, and how often do you look for a defensive player, single out a defensive player? Yeah, no, I think there's a lot of awareness. Certainly, where's 95, and uh, and for our O line, our center, you know that whole thing. Um, you know, whether it's Aaron Donald, whether it's Max Crosby, whether it's Nick Bosa. You know, there's there's just over a half dozen, maybe a dozen guys in the league like that who will wreck the game if you don't have four hands on them as many plays as possible. Um, you know, and Chris is a personality on the field. He, he'll make himself known. You know, you don't really have to go looking for him because he's going <laughs> to he'll break the huddle. He's making he's having a conversation. You're in a TV timeout. He's having a conversation. So they were the linemen last year in Minnesota. When we played him. We're joking. They said. Chris is, you know, big personality. He's pretty friendly. He's positive out there, but I don't really want to hear any of it because he's ruining my day. So, uh, yeah, we'll hopefully be able to uh, to corral him on Sunday. But he's he's the real deal. Do those guys? Do you get yelled at by defensive players? Yeah, usually, you know, it's everything from the week one. T.J. Watt after a play where you know he does a drive by, and I kind of hear him and feel him as I throw the ball. He'll he'll walk back to the next play and just say, "Hey, what's up, Kirk?" And uh, just kind of like he's saying hello. And then there's other guys who, you know, they may yell you like that at me. Um, oh. You know, you'll get guys who who have more to say. You know, Brandon Graham at the coin toss. I, I you know, go back to playing him at the University of Michigan. We both grew up in Michigan. So I, I've always, you know, followed him and dap him up at the coin toss. And he's going to let me know, hey, you know, you're going to see me at the coin toss, but you're going to see me a lot this game. So he tries to, you know, kind of get in your head from the, from the coin toss. So there's always talk going but on. But you're not a trash talker. So my my – perspective is the same perspective of most quarterbacks which is why in the world would i gas them up <laughs> like like 
football is hard enough. Why in the world would I add fuel to that fire? And sometimes I see teammates who are adding fuel to their fire. And I look and I go, guys, you're not the one standing back in the pocket that they're foaming at the mouth to come get. Please stop. Please stop adding fuel to their fire. Do you try to be overly nice? Uh, there's a little bit of that. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with, uh, hey, nice play, good rush. Uh, you know, how are the wife and kids? Good you cheap know, shot. You don't say anything like that. You don't say, hey, nice cheap shot. No, no. You, you just kind of try to keep it civil. Uh, don't give them any any additional reason than they already have to uh, to come take your head off. He's the new Mr. Primetime. And Primetime <laughs> Sunday night, Kirk D. Cousins. Uh, hey, great to talk to you again. Congratulations on the win. Good catching up. Thanks, Dan. And only here to talk about Qualcomm. That's good. Yeah, I think it's uh, 2011, first time we had him on when he was at Michigan State.